Welcome, welcome family and friends. Today we have a very special guest who's bringing to us a very special story, very powerful revelations. And it is also a full circle moment that involves yours truly. Our very special guest is a longtime supporter, family member, and friend who had sent me this book. The book is entitled A Hidden Key to Our Spiritual Magnificence, Autism. By the end of this particular installment, you will see why this book is named the revelations that has come about since this book has come into the special guest home in her life and thereafter since this book has been shared with me i love the book the book is very very encouraging it's inspirational and whether you know someone who has autism or related to someone who has autism or not you will be touched and inspired. Without further ado, let's welcome our very special guest, Connie Regalado. Connie, are you there? I am here. Greetings. Greetings, greetings. Thank you so much for sharing this time with us and opening up your life and sharing such a very personal part of your existence and your family's existence with us but as we previously discussed we pretty much agree that there will be many people who will benefit and be inspired and touched by your story so again i thank you so much for being so open and candid with us in advance because i know how candid we are and that you're going to be my first question, Connie, is uh, for those of us who do not know, please tell us what is autism and what are the typical signs that one may be autistic? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure having me on the show. Hello, family. Autism is a neurological condition that is present from early childhood and is usually diagnosed in early childhood, usually around the age of two or three um, is generally when someone is diagnosed with this. One of the many signs is difficulty in communicating and forming relationships with other people and in using language. For example, one may notice that the child has no interest in interacting with other children. This includes their siblings, um, cousins, even their own parents. Eye contact is also limited and there may be some self-stimming behaviors and examples of self-stimming behaviors would be walking back and forth, walking in circles, or um, some even have a tendency of lining objects up in a very straight line. So those would be just some of the signs. Um, some people even say autism is like they live in their own little world. They're just to themselves. They're not a part of our reality. So when did you first become aware of autism and at what point did you become a strong advocate for autism? I first became aware of autism in 1996 when Daniel was diagnosed with it. He was two years old. And as I stated before, this is uh, something that children are usually diagnosed with um, between the ages of two and three. However, that's not to say that that's the the norm. Um, there's some that are not diagnosed to five or six or even later in some circumstances. And as far as the advocate is concerned, I would not really consider myself a strong advocate for autism, but one who has love and compassion for other families and caretakers of those not only with autism, but other disabilities, as I do understand the daily challenges it entails. I've always participated in fundraisers and other events that support autism, but again, I would not really consider that advocacy because it was not done on a more regular and consistent basis. Now, I have recently become excited with the idea of becoming a spiritual advocate for autism and would like to be a part of bringing awareness on how we can begin recognizing those with autism as earth angels or as one of the forerunners that are here to assist us with ascension. This is not to say that 
they are the only way to ascend. But they are with no doubt a huge piece of this. And after the recent experiences with my son, I cannot deny or ignore this fact. Has anyone ever stopped to wonder why autism has skyrocketed in the last 20 years? Just the rate alone has skyrocketed. Wouldn't it make sense for Source or the All to employ these unsuspecting individuals as his or her key soldiers in ascension? If we ignore this fact, could we be hindering something? or not facing a truth? What were the warning signs or symptoms of your child's uh, particular state of autism? Daniel did not make eye contact and he constantly Winged his fingers in front of his eyes. In addition to that, he had not started talking yet, nor did he form any real sounds as if he were trying to begin talking as a typical child would. What were some of the greatest challenges you faced raising an autistic child, and how did having an autistic child impact your relationship, your marriage, uh, in your child's earlier life? Well, first off, let me start by addressing the uh, impact on relationships and marriage. I am lucky to say that I have not had any dramatic impact on relationships as a result of having an autistic child. Um, Daniel has a great stepfather who actually doesn't like to be referred to as a stepfather. He says I'm his co-parent. So anyway, Daniel has a great co-parent and uh, a great uh, father. So he has two fathers that are an active part of his life. Um, so yeah, I, I'm pretty lucky in that regard, and Daniel has uh, a lot of love. Now, the greatest challenge was knowing that my life would be different. You know, after receiving that diagnosis, I remember thinking, what did I do wrong? Why me? You know, I totally lost the luxury of someday watching my child go on his first date, getting married, having children of his own. That was just taken away from me. So I had to deal with all of that internally. And then you go through, after you get through over all that, that big shock, you go, okay, you dust your shoulders off, your knees off, and you say, okay, now what now? What are we going to do now? So in what way were you guys teaching or guiding uh, your child? And for instance, did you have help from people um, in the autistic care community or family, friends, a nurse? How did that work out for you guys? Dale was going to special ed classes in the public school system. However, after many in many battles to get services that he desperately needed. We opted on just pulling him out of the school system altogether and homeschool him. The schools provided no real benefit for Daniel, which brings me to a point that I want all to understand. Despite the fact that Daniel is actually classified on the more severe side of autism, he's nonverbal, you know, he's got the behavior issues, you know, doesn't want to focus, you know, or, or unable to focus. Despite all that, and despite the lack of educational support for him for his school years, it had no bearing on his abilities to communicate in a profound manner, um, an amazing manner, using facilitated communication. This itself is amazing and shows that there is something to be explored here. Let's go ahead and move into the book Autism. Uh, please tell us about the book Autism and tell the viewers what the book is about and how you came across this particular book. I actually came across this book by <laughs> I was actually sitting in front of my laptop one day, just 
staring at the screen, just wondering, what am I doing? I don't know. I'm just in a daze. And all of a sudden, I heard in my mind to do an internet search using the keywords of autism and ascension and autism and spirituality. When I did that, the first website that popped up was www.autism.com and there's a uh, she spells autism in a very interesting way it's actually uh, A-W-E-T-I-Z-M and the website I, on this website I learned about the book and upon reading the book I learned of validations between uh, personal experiences that I had recently encountered with my son communicating with one of my co-workers telepathically and, you know, after traveling to visit one another, that was going on. So this book helped me understand that concept. The book is mainly about a look into the world of an autistic mind that holds secrets from the astral realm. And they're not really secrets, they're knowledge for us to know, but I, I just like the word secrets better. Um, and, and these secrets are to be shared with you once you are ready to receive them by being a loyal student and allowing them to be your knowledgeable teacher. Don't look at them as disabled or retarded, but as earth angels that have come here to be your guide to ascension. It also serves as an invitation to parents, caretakers, light workers, etc., to become aware of the massive role that autistics play in the ascension. What were the most inspirational and encouraging points that you've gained from the book? When Lyrica wrote, I am not retarded, I'm intelligent. I loved how her mother got to see for the very first time that her child did have a voice. And I feel so blessed that I got to experience that as well with Daniel and would like to, you know, take this opportunity to thank Gail for writing this book and spending over 33 years working at this with Lyrica. This will indeed become a tool that can be used to connect spiritually with these individuals. It is time that we hear their voices and give those who are struggling with their roles in autism the courage to speak their truth for all to know. Absolutely. Well, you sent me a copy of the book. I love the book. Even though I was really, really busy, I had moments where I just could not put it down. And I even had moments that I was so pulled into it that I ended up, you know, losing track of prior commitments. This is one of those books. It's just, it just grabs you and pulls you in. And one of the reasons why it pulled me in is because much of what was being shared on those pages were things that I had been talking about for the longest. So what encouraged you to purchase the book and send it to me? Let me just say that if I were financially able, I would purchase a copy of this book for everyone, even the folks that are not even on this planet. This book is a must read. It's not just about autism, but ascension. This book talks about the huge role autism plays into this. Another reason was because about five months before I even knew this book existed, in August of 2013, you had sent me an email after looking at a photo of Daniel, and you stated that he is a highly advanced alchemist and catalyst that has come to experience autism and study the DNA light codes inside out. You also mentioned him uploading his configurations into the grid. And as I told you before, when I first received this email from you, it resonated but only because I was thinking of the experiences that Daniel had had with one of my former co-workers, you know, with the astral traveling, the telepathic talk, all that good stuff. That is the only reason that it validated because I, my mind was open to that experience, okay? However, after I read the book, 
and I and there was mention of grids and the explanation of autism science. I just knew he deserved to read this book because it is definitely a treat and validates information that you had already provided in a reading. So that it was just all amazing because I went from uh, the first time getting the email from you, it being validated for another reason, and then upon reading the book, it's a new reason and a bigger reason why it's validated. How much of your life parallel? This was a full circle moment for me as well because I had forgotten about that reading that I had given you about uh, Daniel, quite honestly, because I, I do it so much. I don't remember all the readings that I give because I'm just a vessel. But when I read the book, you had told me that there was something really special that I needed to know, but I had to read the book to get it. But when I, I got it, when I was reading the book, I got it. It screamed loud and clear. And what better validation could anybody ask for? So how much of your life paralleled the story of the personality and characters within the book? I really related to Gail's experiences in the book. Um, one of the things that she wrote in the book that I really, really identified with was she was picking Lyrica up from, uh, I believe it was school, and she notices the other children, you know, there's different disabilities amongst them, and they would at least acknowledge in some way their parent or caretaker. Lyrica, and of course my son Daniel, would not acknowledge us. And that is very difficult for a parent when you're loving a child that does not show you that love back. So I really identify with her there. Another thing that Gail and I have in common is that we had to become more spiritual in order to understand our child more. Yes. Well, you know, when I read the book, there were so many revelations, but I'm curious as to know what is the most powerful revelation that you've gotten as a result of reading the book and why? I know there are several, but what is the most powerful revelation that you got from reading the book? Uh, autism does play a huge role in ascension. They are the guides and anchors into the new world. They have sacrificed coming into compromised bodies to carry out this planetary mission. I also think it was very cool that Daniel's ability to be in more than one place at one time and to astral travel and use telepathy was validated. I think that's really cool. The reason several of these feats can be carried out by autistics is because they are not fully incarnated in this reality. Again, it's not telling you to believe this, but just to have an open mind. Absolutely. You know, one of the greatest points of the book for me is when autistics express themselves by way of FC. FC, by the way, stands for Facilitated Communication. Could you please tell us what have you learned about FC? After reading the book Autism, I performed a search for facilitated communication, and I found mixed reviews regarding the subject and nothing which I deemed to be concrete on how I could even learn this process. And the strange thing is that I knew that I would have to think of creative ways in obtaining a letter board that Daniel could use for his facilitated communication and that I was not going to rely on on someone else's recommendation on the internet on how to do facilitated communication. I don't know if that makes any sense. And that's another thing parents interested in uh, facilitated communication should understand, that the use of the internet information regarding this subject is to be used as a guide and not as a all or nothing or it's, this is the only way. 
the facilitating communication that Daniel uses involves some telepathy as well. It can only be fully explored by parents and caretakers who are open-minded to that experience and who are ready to accept the teachings of these very advanced souls. And, you know, Daniel and I have this joke. And, you know, I never thought I would have the privilege to even say that, that I have a joke with my nonverbal autistic child. But I, we actually have a joke now, you know, thanks to facilitated communication. But we have a joke. The joke is, is that facilitated communication is my new toy. And I want to keep playing with it because I love seeing this new side to my son. I love everything about it. I appreciate all the messages, even the ones that I don't fully comprehend once first receiving them. I love that I can interact with my son this way, and I can't wait for others to experience this beautiful gift. Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons, too, why I wanted to share this story, because more people need to know about this technology. It's very, very effective. So, Connie, what have you learned through all of your interactions with one another with this new mode of communication? Well, besides the fact that he shares messages of high spiritual importance, I have noticed that he has my sense of humor and that he thinks he's a stud. Speaking of high spiritual messages, he speaks in high truths, and there is no filter on some messages that come across. And so basically he does not say what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Recently, we have learned that Daniel prefers telepathy as a form of communication over facilitated communication. However, we're not there yet. We're still kind of learning that technique as him as our teacher. And we as a family have been working on our telepathy with Daniel. And these are some uh, quite fun experiences. <laughs> Although Daniel has indicated some 3D things on the letter board, he prefers to type mainly spiritual things. What is usually expected in educational settings of autistics is to communicate their wants and needs. However, the facilitated communication used for Daniel is not done with that main concept in mind, and it's his preference. This is not to say that he will not or does not type his needs and wants. He simply prefers more enlightened conversations. So with this, I have seen that my spirituality, uh, my knowledge has become more advanced. And, you know, Daniel on more than one occasion has given me some tough spiritual lessons to learn uh, via facilitated communication. And this took me being honest with myself and accessing my own inner things that I had locked away. So I, I'm looking at all of this as a wonderful gift. And I'm excited to see what words come from Daniel or what the future words that come from him because it's almost like having a conversation with God. The messages are so profound. So, um, and I always wonder, you know, just watching Lyric and Daniel, just seeing the words that come out of them, um, Chris Phyllis Gold, which is another group uh, in the book. I often wonder how many other autistics are out there that can be included into this wonderful conversation? What can they add and where could that take us as a whole? Mm -hmm. So, Connie, what would you say to the skeptics and the naysayers who say that FC is bogus, it's basically the, the person who's helping the child with autism to say certain words, or it, the words are not really coming from the child with autism, but it, it's coming from the facilitator themselves. What would you say to people who believe or think such? Well, you know, I would never type out most of the things Daniel has said to me using facilitated communication. He speaks totally different. For example, his response to me giving him a bath was, I appreciate the bath. Now, I would have said, thanks for the bath. 
And as a matter of fact, this is what makes facilitated communication so tricky is that one is used to their own words and the autistic individual will have a different way of bringing those words out. Also, I do believe that I have a small form of undiagnosed dyslexia. So there are times that I have to get Daniel to respell words and sometimes full sentences, just redo the entire sentence over again. And I know that's frustrating for him. So again, no, it's not to me as the facilitator because I wouldn't waste his time having him respell things out if it were just me. Okay, um, also, in addition to that, just one last thing about that, there are times, and, you know, people who have dealt with autistics know that uh, there's a majority of them that have some behavior problems, there could be some meltdowns, what have you, there are times with Daniel that I, it takes over an hour to get a paragraph out of him that you can document because you have to refocus him and that's a lot of energy to suggest that oh well these are just her words because it wouldn't take me an hour to get a paragraph out because I could just get it out myself and I could just move his hand exactly where I want his hand to be on the letter board and that's just to me it's more difficult to fake it than to really do it now, you know, ironically, Lyrica actually wrote in the book that she understands the doubt that one may have about facilitated communication. And she actually said, and I, I'm quoting this from the book, to ask to type on no facilitator, or with no facilitator, is folding on purpose it serves. I don't want to lose my connection to the higher worlds when I type. So the facilitator is like a ground wire here on the physical world. So I, and this is just me, you know, by you touching them so they could do facilitated communication, you're ground, helping them to ground the message. Now you said that uh, Daniel has a way of expressing himself that is not of you. Would you mind sharing something that Daniel had written. And we had, by the way, gotten Daniel's permission to share his own words with you guys. Would you care to read a special message that Daniel has prepared for humanity or the viewers or listeners? Special words from Daniel. Now, here's another example right here of how this is not the facilitator talking because the facilitator would have made the following message that I'm about to read to you all uh, from Daniel easier to understand. So this is what came through for Daniel, that for the listeners. And man's blindness slows, so will always enter a makeshift reality. Victory is upon us if we accept and utilize fear and wisdom. Now, I had translated this to make it easier for everybody to understand. However, I figured that I would allow the listeners to look at that and determine for themselves what it means. I have my own idea, but I don't want to put that mine out there because I am curious as to what others feel that this means. Wow, that is some powerful information. Unfortunately, it is time to bring this one to a close. But before we go, Connie, I have one last question. Do you have any words of advice for those who are struggling to understand their autistic child? Well, I'm going to respond to this question by quoting something Daniel communicated to me. Okay? He says, The most humble role like that of supporting an autistic like me can be the most profound and powerful role of all. I simply need your love and your peace. That will help me tremendously to do my work and make progress in that direction. So basically... 
excuse me, tremendously to do my work and make progress in that direction. So basically, continue to love and honor the autistic in your life. In addition to that, make steps to try to understand their world instead of always forcing them to comply with ours. Also, it would be a good idea to let go of some of your belief systems because if you have a specific belief system, you may never fully see the beauty of your child's potential. Open your mind and know that it's real. As much as I hate to bring this one to a close, Connie, again, I thank you so very much. You are so welcome. And thanks for having me on the show. Oh, you are more than welcome. The pleasure was and is all mine. A huge thanks to your audience and those who are listening to this video for allowing me to express the great experiences that I have had in reading the book Autism. If you're interested in the book, you can go to www.autism.com. And again, that's A-W-E-T-I-Z-M. The author of the book is Gail Barkley Lee and her autistic daughter, L Lyrica Mia Marquez. You will not be disappointed. Absolutely. All right. Bye, family.